Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. <clears throat> Hi. Still I'll try that it. again. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. And welcome to Is Gorgomatic. I have been fighting the same damn cold for more than three weeks, and I cannot shake this thing. Mm -hmm. I know it's not COVID. I've been tested. Um, so I'm Tim McNiff. There you have the dynamic duo on Thursdays of Kevin Gorg, a.k.a. Gorgomatic, and Thinking Bigum, Senator Carla Bigum. Good morning, you guys, and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hey, we got a game tonight. We got Thursday yeah. night football. We got the Vikings, and man, uh, players coming and going at practice yesterday. I'm like, hey, we got Patrick Peterson back. We got Harrison Smith back. If we don't have Brian O'Neill, are, are the Vikings screwed or are they screwed? They're in trouble, and everybody's battling it right now. We've got a team in the National Hockey League up in Ottawa that shut down. They've got half their roster and coaching staff with COVID. So, you know, we're, we're tiptoeing through the tulips, and we're trying to figure this thing out. And the Vikings have been dealing with this now most of the season. There's been injuries. There's been COVID issues. Uh, yeah, O'Neill would be a huge loss. They don't have a lot of room for error right now. It's Packer week. Yikes. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a bad uh... – it's a bad situation, uh, and also what's bad is all the damn penalties that they have. They've got to stop that, um, and uh, you can't do that against Aaron Rodgers. He's going to get you when you're running off your your defense, your extra defense guy when you're changing. Um, he's just that good with it. But um, yeah, it's gonna be a it's going to be a tough game, even though it's at home here. Um, they got to have all hands on deck. They got to be focused. Uh, I was glad to see that they opened up the playbook a little bit last week, but um, still, I question some of the clock management. Uh, of it, uh, but I'm glad to see Patrick Peterson and um, uh, Harrison Smith coming back. Uh, their ship on the field uh, are needed, and uh, just their veteran status um, is going to be helpful in, in being able to make some plays, create some turnovers, hopefully. Yeah, it's tough to get against uh, a Raj, that's for sure. He has yeah. uh, tortured the Vikings uh, throughout the year like nobody else, uh, and um, this is a guy who, uh, with Devontae Adams, has run rush shot over us. And with the addition of Patrick Peterson, where a lot of people questioned it, if for no other reason than these two games, I thought it was a good yep. move. Because here you got a guy who can mm -hmm. go out there on an island, and he's still the best choice. I mean, he's not a small corner. He can physically match up with Adams better than anybody else they have. Um, Speed-wise, you know, what are you going to do? 31 well, with a bad hammy, I'll still rather roll with – Patrick Peterson, anything else we have in our roster, am I wrong? Right, but you're going to roll uh, a second layer into coverage against Devontae Adams. They don't have any other receivers that can really hurt you. Cobb is an underneath guy. He's a possession guy. You're looking at maybe five or ten yards with him at the most. So you're going to have to overprotect with Devontae Adams. And teams have been doing that. If if people are out there watching and have played him in daily or own him in season long, which I do in one of my leagues, you know he's had a couple of big weeks. But week by week, he he hasn't blown up, including last week against Seattle. To me, if you're looking at this from a Vikings perspective with the defense depleted, it has to be a Dalvin Cook week. I look at the the game the Vikings played at Lambeau a couple weeks ago or a couple years ago where Dalvin had three touchdowns. That's how you beat this team. You're not going to go out there and gunsling it Cousins against Rodgers because you're going to lose that battle. You've got to go ball control. You've got to get Dalvin Cook involved and keep Rodgers off the field as much as possible. I was just going to say that the everybody knows the theory to keeping or to beating the Packers keep Rodgers off the field. Yep. So, and, and our other, defense, our defense is capable of doing it. Now, I don't know for the whole game. We've seen that happen and say play out the whole yeah. season. So, um but that it, they've they've got to play the whole game uh and they've got to keep them off the field and they can't for the love of God have as many um penalties and they've got to try to create some turnovers and and I think we've seen um Harrison Smith do that uh religiously. Um, throughout his career, and and they're afraid of him. And Patrick Peterson, again, uh, is going to be helpful. Well, we added a couple run stoppers in the offseason. Unfortunately, yeah. we haven't had one for much of this year. And they're going to need that on Sunday. Uh, Aaron Jones is out, but this Corey Dillon is a beast. Yes. He is a very, very big guy, and I think that they're going to try to do the same thing. Own the clock. I don't think it's a coincidence that of the two touchdowns he scored last week against Seattle, both came in the fourth quarter. And, and the guy that keeps coming to my mind is how many times we played Seattle and the rare times that Chris Carson's ever been healthy, we have no answer for him. He just looks right. like, you know, just a superstar against us. Dylan's that size and faster. Is Pierce yeah. back? Is Pierce back? No. Well, 
No, he's not. Um, and that's a problem. And yeah. yeah he, this, he's, he's on IR, not even eligible to come back for a couple oh, more weeks. Okay. I don't think he, he'll be back until early December. Yeah, the A.J. Dillon thing's a problem. There's no doubt about it. And if you're going to double up on Devontae Adams and you're going to worry about Rodgers and have that pass rush and all the great things he can do with the line of scrimmage, seeing things and adjusting, yeah, this is not a matchup where you're going to want to lose the time of possession. I mean, the Vikings have, have done that now uh, more often than not this year, and it's hurt them. The Baltimore game comes to mind. Uh, you've got to find a way to sustain drives and to stay on the field as long as possible because between Dillon Adams and Rodgers, this is a really bad matchup for the Vikings defense. And so uh, you've got to use the weapon that you have. And the Vikings' best weapon is still Dalvin Cook. I don't know why they haven't used him as much. He's finally healthy into the second half of the season, something we haven't seen every year of his career. This is this is your chance to beat him. And, you know, I, I think it's going to be a really good game. I think the Vikes are going to yes. stay right with him. But yes. when push comes to shove, to your point, Timmy, in the fourth quarter, you're going to have to hope that that defense isn't dead tired. Yeah, well, that's Sunday, and we've got a game tonight. We've got a game tonight, which on one point on paper looked like it was going to be a, a really nice game, and, man, it's kind of fallen apart around us a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got uh, New England, 6-4, uh, and four, taking on the Atlanta Falcons, 4-5. and five. The question is, who will be there for Atlanta tonight coming off a big loss yeah. against Dallas? Yeah, they're right. Jekyll and Hyde, aren't they? I mean, trying to figure <laughs> out this Falcons team is nearly impossible. Cordero Patterson's a game-time decision. He's certainly going to try to give it a go, and he is such a difference maker for this offense. And now you've got the hottest team in football, New England, and Belichick. I mean, they are just rolling right now. This is an interesting matchup. Uh, it's a rematch of a Super Bowl that, that the fans in Atlanta will never forget. They might never win a Super Bowl, and that might have been their best chance, up 28-3 to in the second half. And I'm certain there will be a lot of conversation about that tonight. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, Calvin Ridley's obviously a big playmaker. He's out, um, and uh, they have the stud uh, Pitts, uh, who I think is going to um, probably be their their big target tonight. But, um, you know, uh, tell me I'm wrong when I say they're in the modern era there isn't a better player development coach than Bill Belichick. Maybe you could put Andy Reid in there. But um, Bill Belichick is just uh, honestly one of the best in the business, and – he is really taken to Mac Jones, who, when you watch him in Alabama, was great. Other than Tua, um, I don't think there's another Bama, co uh, Bama uh, uh, quarterback playing right now. Um, you know, certainly, AJ well, well, McCarron is on IR. While, right? Tua. Who? Tua. Yeah, besides, besides Tua and, and Mac, I don't think you have uh, any Jalen other. Hurts. Okay, my, my bad. They were all there. All he three were there Oklahoma, at the same though. time. He went. He he went to Oklahoma after, didn't he? Yes, he, he sure did. did. Yeah. yeah, you're right about so, that. He was more of an Oklahoma guy, but it's amazing they had all three on roster. Yeah, and and so the the, the school. What I'm trying. What I'm what I'm uh, inarticulately getting at is that this school <laughs> is so good, and then you you take such an elite team and bring them to one of the best coaches who can develop a player. This guy has sky's the limit. For Mac Jones, I mean, he. I've I've always I've liked him for you know since he's been at Alabama. I think he's was a brilliant pick um, for for the Patriots in the last draft. So I'm excited to to see him. Um, the one thing I'll say about the Patriots uh, is they haven't had the toughest of schedules, and they've got a horrendous schedule coming up. And so they've got to play the Titans next week, and then yep. they still got to play the Bills, who are leading the um, their division uh, now. So uh, twice, yeah. So I mean, they've got some a tough schedule coming up, but they are playing lights out, lights out. They're, they're one of those teams too that I think last year were um, faded by a lot of people, and, and and Belichick was too, and he had to watch his former quarterback go on and win the Super Bowl. But you have to remember how many players declined to play because of COVID nineteen. Yeah. I mean, there was people. there was a lot of guys who did not play for New England, so they were never as bad as they seemed last year, still, uh, the, Mac Jones was a gamble to me. I think, you know, cause you, you ask yourself, is he that good or is he a product of the system and the dominant players that are all around him? If you want to say there's not that many quarterbacks in the NFL, there are, are, are a proliferation of receivers from, mm -hmm. from Alabama coming Absolutely. and and in the league right now the last couple of years. So I think Mac Jones benefited from that, but obviously the young man's, put in his time 
and learned and, and yep. the, the ways come in. I the, the think back to when he played uh, Tampa on that night and it was supposed to be Tom Brady's night and he damn near stole the show. <laughs> yeah, he yep. did. No, he, he's a great coach and he, he will always be the, the, the best coach when it comes to being a tactician within the game and taking away the opposition's best. That's kind of who he's always been. And I think Tom Brady would be the first one to admit it. You know, when he got into the league as a six round draft pick, barely played at Michigan. I think it was, it was a lot of Tom Brady's inner talent and fortitude. It was also a lot of great tutelage from, from that coaching staff led by Bill Belichick that made that perfect marriage that made them both into the superstars as a coach and quarterback. They now are. Uh, I think people are real quick last year specifically to point out that it was more Brady than Belichick. But I, I still believe that when Tom Brady got to the league, he wasn't the guy he is now. And I still believe that that time in New England created the monster that we now have as maybe the greatest one we've ever watched. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it just shows um, also back to Mac Jones real quick and, and just the ability of Belichick to develop these players. A 69% completion rate right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the highest in, in the league. So mm. um, he's, I mean, he, he's listening and he's learning. He's being that sponge. And I tell you, I think that that's what, um, if, if, uh, you know, people go to the Patriots and Belichick instills discipline on them. I mean, they've had some undisciplined players that have gone there and have done very well. And those that haven't um, listened to him and learned from him, he's not kept. So um, I think it just shows you. He's, I, I mean, it, he's going to be a Hall of Fame coach. He's going to probably go in the same time Brady does. I still predict that when one retires, the other one's going to announce shortly thereafter so hmm. they can be on that stage together. Um, and, you know, I just think that um, he's he's great and he's having a really positive impact on Mac Jones, and that's going to benefit him. Yeah, no, well, and, and look at the people. McDaniels is back. Uh, Patricia is back. You know, they may not be in their, their former s- jobs by name, but they're there. They're there. And, and mm-hmm. so the gang has all been assembled again, you know. So, yep. hmm. yeah, New England's a threat. I mean, yep. I, there is no doubt. I mean, you look at the schedule, it's tough for them, but everybody else is looking at that schedule going, yeah, I wish we'd have played them in the first fourth of the season rather than where they're not going right to now. Win. Yeah, they're they're rolling right now. So uh, we'll get to uh, Gorgomatic in a moment, but let's get on to thinking Bigham. Mm-hmm. Where are we going tonight with this game? Uh, well, I think um, I think it's going to be a closer game, um, and I do think that because of the injuries, uh, the the big playmaker for the Falcons is going to be Kyle Pitts. Um, he's averaging about five receptions a game, um, and he is getting um, about seven uh, receptions a game. So I'm going with Kyle Pitts having over four and a half receptions today. Um, and then on the other side with the with the Patriots, um, and I believe KG's talked about this guy before, Kendrick Bourne. Mm-hmm. He is, uh, I mean, Mac Jones loves him. <laughs> And he's really given him some opportunities. They've really found uh, a way to get him involved uh, in the game. And uh, he's stud. And uh, so I think he's going to have over 34 and a half receiving yards tonight. Those are those are my thinking big plays. Love it. And Bourne might have that on one play because he's <laughs> kind of developed into their big play guy. They don't have yeah. a lot there in terms of wide receiver talent. They're They're very under the radar in that respect. And he is a guy that can go for 40 in one play. So I love that play. And I think uh, that place also influenced by is Damian Harris available tonight? He is, but they're going to, they're going to split the backfield. I think it's going to be 60 Harris, 40 Stevenson. So that that's a problem for, for me specifically, because I've got them both on my roster. I don't know who to start, but uh, they're both going to play. It's typical Belichick, right? He, he loves to muddy that backfield. Which is why I didn't pick Stevenson for my prop play. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's hard because because uh, it looked like uh, Harris was was taking over control of that. Stevenson had, had got the opportunity earlier and had some uh, ball control issues, mm-hmm. and then Harris got the concussion protocol, and uh, and they've got a third back who who catches the ball well and, and Bolden um, is good. Yeah, Bolden, Bolden can yeah. do some damage. So doesn't really run to the ball that much, but they throw to him quite a bit. Yeah, in, in daily fantasy, you're going to have to get creative. I kind of like Bolden as a nice pivot, but it's so crowded, and it's going to really depend on how the Patriots play this game. If they get a lead, I think they're really going to spread the wealth. If it's a if it's a tight game, I think Harris probably is the guy because he can secure the football. Uh, it's a mess. And then on you know on the Atlanta side, not knowing if Cordero Patterson is going to play, 
Um, you know, they just had Davis hasn't done much. So I it this is one of those really tough nights to build a lineup because you know, if New England ends up blowing these guys out, you're gonna have a hard time finding the right players. I mean, it's just not one of those nights. And if we've learned anything from the past couple of weeks is you have to create a scenario where Atlanta wins this game. You do. 100%. Because we, we keep seeing it. We didn't think, yep. you know, the last game, oh, Miami's not going to win, yep. you know, and, and then Miami wins. You know, we keep seeing this at home. So you have to create that scenario where Atlanta somehow finds a way to win. Is it Wayne Gallman? I don't think so, you know, but I mean, right. he, he's, he's one of those guys who earns a nice check and is sort of like, is he still in the league? He's and always he there, right? Is. He's always that backup lingering. He was for a long time in New York with the Giants, and here we go again. Miami, so, yeah. I think, too. Yes, cup of coffee with the fish. And uh, yeah, Gallman's a guy that you can get cheap. And and if Atlanta isn't in chase mode, you know he could be a real nice option too. Mm-hmm. Or or like if they were in chase mode or they weren't, whatever you want to say against Dallas, they fell behind so much that they just kept oh. giving him the ball in the second half. He had at least thirteen carries, I think, against Dallas last week. They were just trying to run the clock, though. I mean, truthfully, they were just trying to get off the field. I mean, literally, they uh, Matt Ryan was just beat up by that Dallas uh, pass rush. So at that point, they kind of waved the white flag. But could that could happen again tonight? I suppose it could, for sure. Yeah, you have to – when you're putting together multiple lineups, you have to consider every single scenario. And one of those scenarios could be a, a 31 to 10 win for, for the visitors, no question. Probably, you know, a lot of people feel that's probably where this game is going to go. Yeah, so let's get Gorgomatic. Let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, everything points to New England. You know, as, as I handicapped the game throughout the week, I, I was one of those guys that said, well, geez, you know, just the way they're playing right now, their defense is clicking – uh, they're playing a terrible Atlanta team on short rest. Belichick is the master at getting his team ready in a, in a in a situation like this. But then the more I looked at it and the more I talked to people, everybody, and I mean everybody that I listened to on satellite radio, everybody I know in my circle of football friends is picking New England. So I'm like, well, isn't that easy? And I went back to my bread and butter, Timmy. We've talked about it from the time we started this show way back in September, and that is the Unique theory in the National Football League, when a team gets beat by 30 points or more, the next week they're pure gold against the spread. For the last six years, it's almost 80%. It's 5-1 and one this year, and we've gone back to the well one more time. We're going to take these stinky Falcons plus the seven and hope they can find a way to contend. We're going to need Cordero Patterson to play. I think that's a big factor in this game. But the more I look at it, with New England having that huge game on deck with Tennessee, um, I think they win, but I think they win a close one. I, I think the Senator's spot on. I, I've got this game in that 23 to 20 range. So, Tim, KG, in life, you have to surround yourself with people that make you better. And KG and you have made me better because I dug deep. I've done some <laughs> research. And Thinking Bigum is going gorgomatic right now, okay? Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So here are some nuggets that I found. Mm. Patriots have been five and one over the past six games on the over. However, mm. however, Thursday night games have been seven and one for the under the past eight weeks. And we just talked about what happened last week. Yep. So this is the, if the statistics are going to prove anything, it's going to be a close game. Yep. And KG is, is spot on. Let's keep it's it low a, scoring and tight. Yep. It's a sandwich game. I mean, yeah, New England had had the match with Cleveland last week, and now they they know Tennessee's coming out there. They know this team just got smoked by by Dallas and is and is beat up. So yeah, I th- I don't think they're in attack mode tonight. I think they're in survive and just survive in advance mode. The other thing is when you get these prime time games, this is where even on Sunday it's not so much. I don't think because. All, everybody else in the league played that day and everybody's in their own stage of recovery at that point in time. Thursday night, it's like everyone's starting to think about the weekend and they know the rest of the league is settling down in front of their TVs or their phones and they're going to watch this game tonight. Yep. So everybody is playing sort of in audition mode yep. because they're they're playing to impress the rest of the league, but they may be looking for their next job. This is your chance to jump up and, and make a name for yourself and show something. That's why I think you can never discount the home team in these sorts of situations. So when you, KG, when you contacted me and said you were making the roll back, I had the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Even if we're going down, I want to go down with this play. Yeah, you're right. This is the right play. Bottom line is, in, in all of prognostications and, and betting sports, 
if you go down on the contrarian side, it feels a whole lot better than what I did last week. And last week on Thursday Night Football, I went down with the masses, all right, the, the general public on the Ravens, and I made an ass of myself. So I would much rather lose this way. I, I mean it. You're going to have, yep. you know, if, if you're in Vegas and you're standing in a sports book, I'm guaranteeing 80% plus of the bets are going to be on the visitors tonight. Let's go down with the contrarians, the ones that like to swim upstream. Let's take those Falcons to find a way. I love it. You also have a couple of prop plays tonight. Yeah, it, you know, when I think of Bill Belichick, um, you know, and the development of this quarterback, I, it, you know, the Senator's spot on. It's You can see the wings sprouting. And I, I do think Atlanta is going to rise up and make this game competitive, which is going to force New England to do what? Throw the football. And especially in the red zone, they've got Hunter Henry rolling right now. So I, yep. the over-under is a, a touchdown and a half. For, for Mac Jones, and I think he's going to go over this number. I think Atlanta is going to force the issue enough where he's going to have to throw a couple touchdown passes. I don't think he's going to go off and have four touchdowns and 400 yards. It's not going to be that kind of game, I don't think. But I think one and a half is very manageable in a game that I believe is going to be tight all the way through it. So I'm going to go over the, the one and a half. The other one, uh, this one's going to be tricky because if we're going to think big and get Gorgomatic home, we're going to have to kind of dance with the devil a little bit here. But I'm okay with that because – when I think of what Bill Belichick has done in his career as a coach, is he isolates the absolute best weapon the opposition has to offer and says, someone else is going to beat me. Well, there's no doubt right now with Cordero banged up and no running game and Ridley out, I mean, this is it, right? This is the guy. It's Pitts, and he is a stud, but Belichick's going to find a way to limit him. He might get his catches and go over the big total, but I don't think he's going over the yards. I think they're going to keep him underneath. I think New England's going to have layers of defense for Kyle Pitts, and I'm going to go under on his yardage total, and I'm going to just trust that Bill Belichick is going to want to take that weapon away. It's going to be an interesting matchup because Atlanta's going to want to feed this kid the ball as much as possible. They don't have much else, but Belichick knows that, and Belichick, like Darth Vader, will come in and just try to <laughs> suck the life out of that tight end. I, so I love these picks. Um, I think they're fantastic, including this one. And I do think um, you're spot on with with how they'll use Pitts. Uh, but I, you know, let's not discount the other quarterback in this game, Matty Ice. Yeah, yeah, you know, Matty Matt Ice. Ryan. After the and, last week, he's got some redemption coming. Yeah, hopefully. and and the emotional game that's going to be tonight. Don't tell me that that guy oh. who who couldn't. Um, you know, delivered the the Super Bowl a couple times when everybody thought they were going to go. Um, this guy's on his last couple of years. Let's be honest, and and so he wants his bad, and he wants to give the fans a show. I think he probably is going to help Pitts this whole week in trying to figure out how you get open, how you create that space, how you you know just really with the route running and making sure that that they're efficient together because they he's going to need him. He doesn't have Halen Hurst either. Um, and that's, um, I mean, he's injured and that was his other go-to guy who's kind of flopped this year, but was a big deal last year for him. So he likes his tight ends. Oh yeah. So well, every, yeah. Everybody does. And you mentioned with new England, that's become the, the security blanket for, for Matt Jones to Hunter Henry. And you look at his total number of targets versus, uh, his number of touchdowns. Correct. I mean, you know, he knows when he's in the red zone, he's looking for Henry and Henry's good. I mean, we haven't had many tight ends really blow up this season. He's been sort of that guy. And we have a couple minutes left. Have you got a few minutes? I know you look like you're dressed to go to the dance, Kev. Are you, have you got a few more minutes? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I'll be heading to the rink in a few. But, no, I yeah, uh, let's let's talk a little more football. Why wouldn't this, we? This is what I want to do is, is, is I'm going to kind of cross over some things because when – the senator and I were talking about daily fantasy sports, and we talked about it. I said, you know, I, I'll tell you what I know, but I'm not the one you should be talking to about this. <laughs> Gorgomatic knows more about this than I do, more than I sit there. Like, I always want to ask him, and I always want to, but I go, I'm already bleeding this guy dry for all his other stuff, so it's <laughs> not right for me to go to the well too many times. But you talked about making lineups for tonight. Well, I've sort of taken on that role in another show that I do called Let's Play Super Draft, and that's going to record at 11 a.m. today. So I, I normally would come up with a lineup, which then became two lineups, which this week has become three lineups because I have to have that scenario where Atlanta wins the game. So quickly, here you go. Here's my first lineup for tonight. I put uh, um, mm -hmm. Mac Jones as my champion or my MVP, depending upon what you're, you're doing there. He's going to have the ball the most. I got Harris in there as, the, as my first guy because 
I think he's going to play. And if, if both given the opportunity with between he and Stevenson, I, I think that he's still the better back. So I've got him. Yeah. I've got Hunter Henry. I've got Bourne. And you have to have one player from the other team. So I've got Matty Ice in there just because I don't think Cordero Patterson is going to be able to play. And if he is, I don't think he's going to be effective. So here you go. What they do with Superdraft is instead of charging you dollars, you get a multiplier. How much How much are their points worth? Well, Mac Jones is 2.2 points. Damian Harris is 2.25, so it's sort of a wash. But I did come up with another uh, roster there where I put Harris in my champion. I've got Jones in there, Hunter Henry, Ryan. And then I've got Stevenson coming back Love at the it. bottom of there, you know, to, to say if they do split carries, they both could end up in the end zone. They both could end up with 10 things and that that takes you know born out of the equation uh but you know there there's two other receivers that could split Bourne's catches as much too so i think that they're chewing clock i don't think they're pounds uh points up on this one and my last one is i have to have one that um has atlanta winning the game. there he is yeah so how about olamide zacchaeus how about that play now that's <laughs> there's an under the radar guy and especially if patterson's out uh, yep. that they're going to go, they're going to double up those tights. Yep. They're going to get him some balls. I, I that's awesome. I love yep. that. Uh, that's what I, I, so I want to hug you right now. I get him good validation from Gorgomatic. Yeah. And, so and I, I think I it's my champ. Yeah. What you're going to want to probably have in your Atlanta focus lineup would be Henry over Harris because yep. Harris, it would be the guy that they would use if they were leading, if they end up chasing, which, which this lineup would be, you're going to want to catch a ball catcher, whether it's Henry uh, whether it's Bourne, uh, whether it's Myers, right? Because this is your lineup where you've got Atlanta winning the game. I do. Atlanta, so you, you're you going to want someone from New England that's going to be in the catch-up mode where they're going to be throwing the ball. Who yep. is that guy for you? Henry. Uh, Henry, Henry. Henry Bourne or uh, or Myers, you know, the, the receiver that just got his first NFL touchdown Chicago. last week. That was so cute. Yeah, that was so I, cute. That was fun. And he's been so close. And he had one or two taken away because of penalty. But that kid right now, if you're going to put an, uh, an Atlanta lineup in, I think you're going to want someone that's going to be able, be able to catch the ball late because clearly New England will have to throw to, to play catch up. So I'm just basically going to, you know, why, pick one of them, but, but pick any of them. If Harris. you can afford, yeah, I would go Myers. I, I like Myers. I think yeah, we're, see, no, money we're is no money is no object. What you're looking for is the multiplier. So yeah, you've like got the multiplier on chips. Yeah. So you just need yeah, a, you need a body. You need, you need somebody but, but in that spot from New England. Separate me and when it comes down to points, you know, from, from the other people. So like last Thursday night, I gave the best lineup and here's, here's, here's from Monday night's game. Is not, no, why am I, I'm hiding that. What am I showing? I want, Oh, I put it down here. I've got it on a ticker. Love the ticker. There it okay. is. Okay. Yeah. So I, I oh really yeah. Debo, Jimmy G. But I had uh, Samuel as my champion, he, c- catching and running touchdowns, Jimmy G. Matthew Stafford Cup, and then it came back with Elijah Mitchell. The dumbest thing I did was I put this in the lowest cost tournament right. to get in, and then I didn't even spend a dollar on it. And if I put a dollar on it, I would have made, you know, and of course I, I was too cheap. I didn't do it. Uh. And, and and so, yeah, I literally woke up the next morning and had people going, hey, that lineup you gave me, I cash big and all stuff. I'm like, where's my money? I didn't Thank play. you. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, you love that, don't you? Yeah, Ugh. I did. Yeah, I did. I did well on um, Monday night. I got great. To, yeah, I got. I, I went twenty eight dollars won um, all three games. I think, and uh, I wish I could remember my lineup, but I know it had um, Debo Samuels. I mean, that's the guy, know. right? Debo was yeah, the guy that night. And Kittle, I just, I just had a feeling. I, I don't know what it is. I just had a feeling that uh, uh, Rams might struggle a little bit. And so as we said, you have to have that lineup. That's you got, have to have yeah. the scenario, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's why you play um, multiple I mean, lineups. Cup, you always had to have cup in every single lineup. You had to. I mean, I, I wouldn't, just... I wouldn't play a game involving the Rams without cup ever. Right. I mean, so, I he's mean, double he's just, digit targets. He, yep. he He's as safe a play in daily fantasy as you're ever going to find. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we've got the, the center as a state to run. And, and KG's got to get to wild practice. And I'll say tomorrow morning, uh, technology being what it is, uh, I will be coming to you from Austin, Texas. Will you still be here Ooh. or will you be on the road? I'll be here and I'll be flying out right after to Florida. So that's okay. where we're headed this weekend. 
So as we always try to be up front with everybody about this, we are then going to do tomorrow's show live with the technology works. Then we are going to pre-tape both Saturday and Sunday because we're both traveling. So we will have plays for you. We won't be able to digest what happens from, from Saturday to uh, Sunday the way we have in the past. But 8.30 on both Saturday and Sunday, if somebody does the technology right, you will have It's Gorgomatic on both shows. Wonderful. All right. Thank you, uh, Carla. Thank, Thank you for you. being with us again. It's a blast having you in here. Thank you, guys. Best day of the week. No doubt yeah. about it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Class <laughs> up the joint. Uh, yeah, there you go. This has been uh, It's Gorgomatic for the senator and for the, I would call you the governor. So I'll just call you the Monsignor. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Gorg, uh, thank you for joining us. Remember what you see here, it's never automatic, but it is always 110% Gorgomatic. And sometimes, just sometimes, we do think big of. <laughs>